I'm Anna Conley, Senior Class President, and welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript looks into efforts to raise minimum wage, goes rock climbing with Hamped Up, and explores the modern youth engagement in politics, and celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month. Republicans in Congress officially abandoned their latest effort to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act on Tuesday night. By Tuesday, Republicans no longer had the votes to pass the bill, with Senators McCain, Collins, Paul, and Cruz in opposition to the legislation. The Congressional Budget Office reported that the Graham-Cassidy bill would have reduced Medicaid spending by one trillion over a decade and left millions of people uninsured. Republican leaders have stated that they will now move on to reforming the American tax code. At a rally in Alabama last Friday, President Donald Trump encouraged NFL owners to fire players who choose to protest during the playing of the national anthem before games. In 2016, quarterback Colin Kaepernick made headlines when he took a knee during the playing of the anthem in protest of racial injustice in the United States. In response to President Trump's comments, more than 200 NFL players chose to sit or kneel during the anthem over the weekend. On Tuesday, Saudi Arabia announced that it will lift its ban on female drivers. Women in Saudi Arabia will be allowed to drive beginning in June of 2018. Saudi Arabia is an absolute monarchy ruled by Sharia law. For decades, Saudi women have protested the ban by driving around the country, although many of them were subsequently jailed or lost their jobs. Leaders have said that they hope the change in policy will boost the economy by increasing female participation in the workplace. Hi, I'm Flor Castillo, and this is Tell It Like It Is. This week, I investigated an important issue among workers in Massachusetts, raising the minimum wage. This is an issue that directly affects Northampton High School students. Many students have jobs, whether it's after school or on the weekends, and these students may get a pay raise as early as 2021. The Massachusetts minimum wage increased to $11 an hour on January 1st, 2014, making the state have one of the highest minimum wages in the country. However, many groups say this isn't enough, and some states, such as New York, have already scheduled to raise their minimum wage to $15 an hour. Proponents that want the bill to raise the minimum wage pass met in the State House last week and are discussing about how the current 11 an hour minimum wage does not meet a fair living wage. Organizations such as the Pioneer Valley Workers Center and Race Up Massachusetts are also working to make raising the minimum wage a ballot question in 2018. So what we're currently engaged in as Jobs with Justice and the Pioneer Valley Workers Center is the Raise Up Massachusetts campaign. So we're engaged in the fight for 15 to raise the minimum wage to $15 an hour for all workers and to raise the tip minimum wage significantly. So right now, you know, with $11 an hour working full time, it's very difficult for workers to be able to make ends meet, um, to be able to put the food on their table, to pay their bills. So we believe that in raising the wage to $15 an hour, we'll be on our way to being able to better survive in a country that's the wealthiest country in the world. So yeah, I, I believe we'll win. There's definitely a movement across the country um, for this, and I think Massachusetts is ready to be a part of it. Under Hampton High, the Young Democrats Club is helping to bring this issue into discussion among students. On Wednesday of this week, a former city council conducted a training at their meeting to train students into collecting signatures to include the minimum wage on the voting ballot. I think it's important for NHS students to know about a minimum wage because it's our future. And I feel like how much the country um, pays its lowest level workers is a reflection of how much we think people deserve. I think, I, I think that's an issue and, that, and these are rights that everyone in NHS has a lot of, a lot of vigor is passionate about. So wh what I want everyone in NHS to know is that right now there's a lot of issues they could be working on. But with minimum wage, um, if we collect 220,000 signatures across the state, we can actually change the future of our state. So we're really trying to join the movement. So our question is really, how do we take the energy at NHS and how do we throw it into this movement? So if you want to start tomorrow, you don't have to come to a Democrats meeting. You can look online and find the dates yeah. that people are collecting in downtown Northampton. It doesn't matter if you're 
um, a 40 year old who knows everything about policy or if you're a 15 year old on the street when you collect when you collect a signature it has the very very same impact if the bill is passed Massachusetts workers will find themselves working for $15 an hour by 2021. I'm Flor Castillo and this was Tell It Like It Is. Well, that was a doozy. Hi, I'm Gabe Nicotera. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Rock climbing, America's national pastime, in most cases is a great activity for everyone, almost never resulting in fatal injuries. But to a lot of people, it's a highly competitive sport. This week, I traveled to Hadley, Massachusetts, the birthplace of fun, as some call it, to the Central Rock Gym, a large facility with many climbing walls as well as a water fountain and a gym. In effort to explore our local rock climbing community, I sat down with Brian Clark, head trainer of the gym, as well as three of Northampton High School's rock climbing wizards. So at Central Rock Gym, there's a lot of different kinds of people you'll see here. You'll see really experienced climbers coming in from the outdoors. You'll see a lot of newer climbers coming in. You'll see a lot of older climbers, younger climbers. You'll also see a, a pretty even distribution of male and female, transgender climbers. Uh, I really like the challenge of rock climbing. How every time you get on the wall, uh, you really got to grab as hard as you can without making yourself too tired to do the whole climb. So the fun thing about rock climbing is that it's not a typical sport where you're just trying to do some sort of physical activity. Rock climbing is pretty involved mentally, so you'll have a climb and you'll have to maybe just run up it real quick, Or, but most often what happens is that you have to figure out how to do each individual move. It may not be as simple as left and right, it's more complicated you have to use your body in weird ways. I guess in general I feel like the sport does get respect because I think people are like pretty impressed when you first bring up rock climbing. They like generally think of the tall walls um, and I think the height kind of makes it impressive. It's definitely not as respected as other sports because it's not as well known as other sports. The fact that the only gym around us is in Hadley um, it makes for a pretty long drive to there, plus there's a lot of Hadley traffic. While other sports have a lot of attention drawn to them, rock climbing isn't really shown in the media that much, although rock climbing will be representative in the Olympics in 2020. I can conclude that rock climbing is actually dope. Who knew playing with rocks could become a real sport? Ha! Uh, in other sports news, there's a home football game tonight at 7 o'clock against Midichog. Please go. Thanks for watching Hamped Up. I'm Gabe Nicotera. Hi, I'm Levi Sivian. Nobody would debate that we are currently in a tumultuous time politically, with strong feelings and political activism present on all sides. This week, I wanted to investigate what role we play in all of this. I sat down with David Pakman. After starting The David Pakman Show at 21, originally in the basement of WXOJ here in Northampton, he soon became the youngest nationally syndicated political radio host. I wanted to know what David thought the most effective way for our nation's youth to get a say is and what role we can ultimately have in politics. I think it's easy to not participate in politics. Not participating is usually easier than participating and I think a lot of people don't participate because they don't really understand the way in which their involvement can directly change the circumstances that are around them at the local level, at the state level, at the federal level. So the best thing one can do at a really early age is to start paying attention to uh, how media narratives are created, what it is that you hear in the news and the issues that are being discussed, and then ideally by the time you turn 18 and you actually can vote, you've already got a much stronger foundation that a lot, than a lot of people who have been voting for a long time even. Next, I wanted to speak to politically active youth in our own school about their own involvement and what they hope to achieve. I try to stay active politically, mostly by keeping myself informed, like reading the news. Um, I like to go to lectures that are offered at Smith College um, and other places around the valley when they're offered, because I think it's really important to keep yourself informed and like learn new things about our political climate and ways you can help. I'm part of the Northampton Mayor's Youth Commission, which is a group of youths who um, try to affect change on a small scale in Northampton. So I think the most important thing that we should be focusing on for our young people is 
making sure they're fully educated and ready to make rational decisions when they're in a position later in life to actually affect significant change. It's very important as the next generation for us to remain conscious of and active in the political scene. By staying active, we can be the change we want to see. I'm Levi Sivian, and thanks for watching. Hola, soy de Venez y feliz de la gerencia hispana y latinx. Hispanic and Latinx Heritage Month runs from September 15th to October 15th and celebrates Hispanic and Latinx culture. Hispanic Heritage Week was established by Representative Edward R. Robal and first proclaimed by President Lyndon Johnson in 1968. The week was expanded to a month by Representative Esteban E. Torres and implemented by President Ronald Reagan in 1988 to cover a 30-day period. Growing up as a Dominican in the U.S., Hispanic and Latin Heritage Month was a time where me and my family could proudly wave our flags and eat our platanos at the Caribbean and Dominican festivals. I sat with Raul Gutierrez, Spanish professor at Holyoke Community College and advisor of the Latino International Student Association in HCC, to talk about his experience with Hispanic Heritage Month. I'm already, originally was born in Mexico. I came to the U.S. when I was 11 years old. What I understand to be Latino Heritage Month, it was, it began originally, I think, with a project from like government agencies regarding like the representation of Latinos in the U.S. Because you have um, African American month or you have celebration for different ethnic groups or racial groups in the case of African Americans. So I think that it was a, a way to create a place or a space during the year, the calendar year for Latinos to be represented. With the way that we try to celebrate it at HCC or in my fam family personally is through cultural events uh, and not just parties because we always associate Latinos with fiestas and like parties and so what we we're trying to do is like liter literary events, um, cultural events that become more nuanced. Emilia Tamayo and Maya Evan, NHS junior and senior, share their thoughts and experiences as Latinas in the U.S. I identify as Latina. <laughs> I identify as Afro-Latina. I personally, I'm Hispanic every day of the year, so I don't feel like I need a month to celebrate my heritage. I, I'm Hispanic all the time and I celebrate it all the time. And I don't do anything special during Hispanic Heritage Month, but I know some people probably do. I think there's definitely less awareness of Hispanic Heritage Month than other Heritage Months. I feel like this year people actually know about it because of that Snapchat filter, and that was pretty much it. And people probably don't know that it's like still going on or it's still a thing or something. For non-Latinos, is uh, La Latino history or Latino culture is part of your culture because we've been in the U.S. since 14, like since. 1521, so the Spanish speakers have been here, or Latinos, be open to learn about new uh, different cultures or different cultural values than yours. Get to know someone that is Latino, and maybe you'll find cool things about just being a Latino in the U.S. Now that you know of Hispanic and Latinx Heritage Month, what are ways you can contribute to support Latinidad? Thanks for watching. Reminder to go to your email or nhstechnology.org slash seniors for more information about the senior picture deadline. Make sure to go check out this week's online extra where Eli and Christian visit Art in the Orchard. Head over to nhstechnology.org to find that and all the previous episodes. No, why? <laughs>